Now we move on to a presentation by Amaya, Dr. Amaya Iriondo de Hond from the Department of Nutrition and Food Science at the Complutense University in Madrid, Spain. And she will be presenting Coffee Fruit Cascara, a new sustainable way to drink coffee. Okay, well, good morning to everybody. First of all, I would like to thank uh, Dirk and Stefan for the invitation. I'm really, I'm really grateful to be here today. I, what should I use to pass my slides? This is super modern, this. This looks like a walkie-talkie. So, this wood uh, <laughs> and this uh, laser. Okay, thank you. Okay, so, and happy International Coffee Day. I'm really grateful to be giving this speech in such an important day, so I wish you all a happy International Coffee Day. Hope you enjoy it. And, well, I'm gonna go real quick through this uh, little agenda. I am very organized, so I hope my presentation is also feels organized to you as well. I'm going to present myself a little bit and my work around the coffee sector and talk a little bit about the coffee cascara composition, the proposed and potential applications, and then I will focus on an instant cascara beverage that we've developed in our research group. So, well, since last year, I've been working in the Department of Nutrition and Food Science of the Universidad Complutense of Madrid, but I've done all my research career uh, for uh, seven years with Dr. Dolores del Castillo, that she's the one that introduced me to this wonderful coffee world. And, in, and I've worked in the Institute of Food Science Research, which I have some of my colleagues here that will give some speeches the next days. And specifically, I worked in the Department of Food um, Analysis and Bioactivity in the food bioscience work. I don't know if they will talk about our uh, group philosophy, but we like to focus on the biorefinery terms and sustainability around waste. So in the project that I worked with, we used coffee byproducts or coffee waste that I hope that from now on we um, call them coffee co-products. And we try to make new ingredients, novel foods uh, from them. We study the macro and micronutrients. We carry out in vitro studies, ex vivo studies using cell models, then we've also worked uh, in vivo doing some toxicity studies, and we study the molecular biomarkers. If we don't find our desired outcome, then we go back to the food, we reformulate, and we should add here also clinical studies that we've also carried out uh, together with sensory analysis. Um, studies. So I did my PhD thesis on the validation of coffee byproducts as food ingredients for a sustainable nutrition and health. On, I finished on 2019. And to show uh, the interest on this uh, area in Spain, the, uh, my PhD thesis was awarded with the first prize of the Agrobank Chair for the best doctoral thesis in quality and innovation in the agri-food coffee sector. And more specifically, now talking about the coffee cascara, because I studied the all byproducts, uh, I'm really grateful and I was surprised to find some of our studies in the technical report of uh, the European Food Safety Authority mentioning our toxicity studies for uh, claiming the health status of the cascara for its use. So now moving on to the coffee cascara composition, uh, I'm sure we all here aware that the coffee cascara, it's the outer part of the coffee cherry, since some other speakers have mentioned, and that more than 90% of that coffee cherry goes into waste. Uh, I'm sure we all here are very aware of this, but it's surprising how in, out from this room, people don't even know that coffee comes from a cherry. They, ha they haven't even, well, I, I'm lucky I, I'm, I was able to hold a coffee cherry in my hand, but uh, many people, they don't know this. And if, if they're not aware that coffee comes from a cherry and there's a long processing to get to the coffee cup, how are they gonna like coffee beverages? They don't even, uh, coffee cascara beverages. They, they're not aware that this even exists. So I, finally, I found this on the internet and I think it's a really fun way to uh, focus to reflect the coffee processing because it's uh, it shows the ten summarized steps and of course here today uh, we're focusing on the processing which is the step on we on which we obtain the coffee cascara. 
Um, I know Dr. Dolores del Castillo will focus on which uh, layers involve the coffee cascara when we refer to this word, so I'm not going to focus on this. Uh, but we can say that from a hundred, more or less from 100 kilograms of mature coffee cherries, we obtain 39 kilograms of cascara. So there's lots of work to be done here. Uh, regarding the composition, I've extracted this information from, from the technical report. Uh, it, the main composition of this raw material are total carbohydrates, some of them digestible. There's also around 30% of dietary fiber and 7% protein, low amounts of fat, and uh, low moisture. What it's interesting that it's, this uh, raw material doesn't only have nutrients, it also has bioactive compounds that are of great interest, as we've seen in previous presentations, and it has a good amount of total uh, polyphenols, and also a uh, small amount of caffeine compared to other products. So what are the proposed and potential applications of this raw material? Well, I would like, we've been told that there, uh, on, with previous speakers, that there are many possibilities, five categories for using uh, this coffee cascara. Well, we always like to refer to this uh, hierarchy of waste um, reusage and prevention proposed by the European Commission, because of course it makes sense that the best option to use uh, food waste is not producing it. But since we all here may be addicted to coffee and we're gonna, we want to still uh, be drinking coffee, then we should reuse this coffee cascara in the human level for human consumption. There are other less preferable options, but since there is a very big amount of waste, I think there's opportunity for everybody to use them at each level. Of course, the most preferable and efficient way w would be for human consumption, then animal feed, reuse, recycle, compost, energy production, and finally disposal. Uh, I have added here some examples of animal feed and fertilizers, uh, fertilizers coming from coffee cascara, but as I mentioned, maybe that these are least preferable options. So what does the European Union let us use the coffee cascara for? Well, we can use it for uh, the preparation of infusions and for ready to drink beverages. And if, if the amount of caffeine in, in the beverage is over 150 milligrams per liter, we should include it. And, and the product has to uh, indicate in its label that it has coffee cherry pulp. Here's what I wanted to um, explain earlier, that maybe somebody goes and, oh, coffee cherry pulp, I, hadn't, I have no idea what this is. So that's why we have done some divulgation and scientific communication works that we'll, you'll see um, tomorrow to let people know that coffee is not only what we drink every morning. And these are, these are some, some examples all over the world. Uh, in the US, there, I, I just put some few examples. Some in the US, we have this Casker drinks, and in Australia, Nestlé has this one, and there are different uh, products available in, in Europe. But what about the whole coffee cherry? There's the coffee cherry company that sells this uh, coffee flower. And I've also seen that mm, it's been mentioned before, the mm, cocoa or chocolate bars containing a coffee cascara. So there are applications for the whole cascara, and we have applications uh, as a beverage. But what about this spent cascara that it's been mentioned before? What can we do with it? Well, this is our proposal for, from our research group that uh, after picking the cherries, depulping, we have this uh, dry cascara that a uh, first issue will be how to dry that cascara that has been addressed before. And then we propose to carry out a water extraction and drying. Very easy, very simple. We've been working on that, as I will mention before, to try to implement this in coffee producing countries. So from one product, we can obtain an enriched aqueous extract which can be used as a food ingredient, as a nutritional supplement for the for cosmetics uh, industry. And then we have this spent cascara that can be dried again and uh, milled and used as a flour, gluten-free flour, and it still keeps some interesting nutrients. 
So here I will focus on the instant Kafka. So just uh, you won't understand this news, but it's uh, I think we think that there's room for this type of product in in the market because, for example, just just a couple weeks ago, uh, in the news in the newspaper in Spain, it's been shown that there's a interest. There's a new product of a specialty coffee, instant specialty coffee, which I wasn't aware, and I've seen that there are also a bio, other viable ones uh, uh, around Europe. And this market is expected to grow about 4% next year. And there are no commercially viable products based on instant coffee cascara. So this is where we're working on. We have the coffee cascara. We carry out a water extraction based on this patent from 2013 that was uh, carried out by uh, Dr. Dolores del Castillo and the, her research group on those years. I wasn't there at the time. And we produce this nice uh, water extract, and we propose to use it at around 1%. That was the uh, proportion mentioned previously for the cascara. Well, you can use this also for the powder, and you obtain, it looks darker here than in here, but it's, it looks nice, uh, something like this. So to, to obtain this aqueous extract, we need to dry. So this is the really bottleneck that we found, but that we find in coffee producing countries. How are they going to dry an aqueous extract that it's, yeah, it has high amount of, of water? Well, first of all, we carried out this, we, yes, this study in 2020 where we uh, described for the first time this extract, this aqueous extract based on cascara, and we compare it with already a viable coffee cascara infusions that are available in the market in Spain. There's, we wanted to say it before, so, but so the questions weren't so long. Uh, there's the Supra Cafe. It's a company in Spain that they have a, a technical industry in Colombia, and they, they produce very, very nice coffee cascara, a high sensory quality. And we compared our extract with their infusion. And we did some sensory analysis in adult population and also on teenagers. So adults, they liked it. They, it, it had good acceptance. But teenagers, they requested a sweeter beverage. Maybe there's uh, room for the kombucha or other fermented drinks around teenagers since it's kind of trendy these days. And in this uh, study, we reported for the first time that this color uh, the color of the beverage is not only due to anthocyanins present in the extract, but also to melanoidins that are present, that are produced during the drying process. And of course, since the Maya reaction goes through uh, the drying process, we not only have melanoidins, we also have acrylamide. But we have acrylamide in much less content compared to the coffee beverage and the instant coffee, always below the limit established by the European Union. And we've been working on this latest uh, paper on which uh, it's not published yet, so I'm going to show you some preliminary results. And we, are, we try to compare two different drying methods, because this extra that I told you about, a, after the water extraction, we freeze dry the product to preserve all the um, bioactive compounds and obtain a nice extract. We, uh, uh, before the pandemic, we went to Honduras and we showed them our idea and they said, okay, how are we going to freeze dry in Honduras? There's no way we can do this here. Well, they had one freeze dryer at the university, but um, no. So we thought maybe spray drying, which is um, a much, established, much more established technique in the drying in the food industry, would be an, uh, an alternative option for drying this extract. So in this paper, we compare freeze drying, which is, it involves freezing, it's a more gentle method, it gives us a high quality product, and, but it takes longer time with the spray drying that we use hot air, it's widely used, has low cost and flexibility, we can play with those parameters, but it involves high temperatures. Um, even though we, there's difference on the spray dried and freeze dried coffee, instant coffee, in our case, we obtained two similar products, very fine uh, powder extract with similar appearance. We also had similar extraction yield, but the one that was sp uh, spray dried from now on with SD, 
uh, had less moisture, which is interesting because we were having some problems. This extract is super hygroscopic, so uh, it it wasn't. We had to still work on that, and and with the freeze drying or spray drying, uh, we're obtaining better better extracts. This both um, this this both extracts they had similar antioxidant capacity, analyzed by, by two different methods. And uh, so the, the drying method that didn't seem to affect the antioxidant properties and the total phenolic content of our extract. Also, as done in collaboration with, uh, with Adriana for the kombucha, the kombucha beverages, we analyzed the antioxidant properties in cell models. So assuming that our, wait, this is, uh, so assuming that our control Intestinal cells have 100% reactive oxygen species as the basal oxidative stress. When we add our extracts, it is reduced below the control levels, not as much as the vitamin C used as a positive control, but it has uh, nice antioxidant properties in, in intestinal cells. And what about the anti-inflammatory properties? Well, it also has anti-inflammatory properties. Our control cells here, they don't have nitric oxide, they don't uh, secrete nitric oxide after stimulation with LPS. But these extracts are in combination with the induction of the impl inflammatory response and they reduce significantly the inflammation in this, in this mouse cells. So we also characterized this extract before and after in vitro digestion because we don't have to forget that we are going to uh, in yes, ingest or in drink this extract, and it go, it's going to go through our uh, digestive system. And among all the chlorogenic acids uh, analyzed, the most abundant one was the 3 o cathokinyl acid. And while before the in vitro digestion, the Sprite dried had higher caffeine content, after digestion we obtained opposite results. It was the freeze dried that one that had higher caffeine content. And after, after this digestion process, the spray-dried extract had higher antioxidant properties than the freeze-dried. So this means that during digestion there's a, of the, of the spray-dried extract, there's a release of high antioxidant at the colon level, which has to be further studied and, and the microbiota has to be evaluated in this context. But further information on the effect of uh, this extract on the intestinal system is going to be addressed by Vanessa uh, that on Monday, tomorrow at 2.30. I hope to see you here. <laughs> okay, so, and we've also carried out some, as I mentioned, sensory analysis. We still have to do it uh, comparing this to drying processes, but the first uh, prototype of the extract was, was well accepted. We've also worked on some business plan to try to implement this in, in the market, so we're still working at a lab level, but we have to evaluate how, how this would work at a commercial level, and we've also analyzed the environmental impacts of the drying methods, and as suspected, uh, the spray drying was uh, more environmentally friendly and less pollutant than the freeze drying. So besides the instant cascara that I showed you before, we, ca we have used this extract. Of course, this, the European Union maybe won't let us do it, but we have introduced this extract in yogurt formulation that was carried out in a PhD thesis in, in our group. And, and we obtained very, very nice results. Yogurts were really tasty, and we did some clinical studies uh, using these samples, and th they were really well accepted. And so I mentioned, what about the spent cascara, that solid residue coming from the water extraction? Well, we have used it in gluten-free bread formulations since, I don't know if there's any uh, celiac, uh, somebody here, but uh, we have, there's this need to improve the sensory and nutritional quality of gluten-free products. I know it by first hand because my mother is a celiac and that bread, pff, there's no way you can, eat that, so we tried to make it more attractive and more nutritious for this patient. So to conclude, um, 
We produced a safe, regarding the acrylamide content, a safe instant beverage that has antioxidant properties. I didn't mention it before, but it could ha be attributed with the nutrition claims that with low fat and low sugar, high in fiber and source of potassium, magnesium and vitamin C, we've analyzed the content of all these micronutrients. That this um, instant um, cascara beverage, its color, it's attributed to the presence of melanoidins. Then the spray drying can be used as an alternative technique for the fruit drying for this extract, and it does not affect the amount of total phenolic compounds and antioxidant properties. And, and well, after digestion, uh, we obtain a product that has bioaccessible antioxidant compounds. So we should. We have to keep studying this, this potential product. I would like to uh, acknowledge my research group at the Thiel, that I miss them very much. <laughs> and, and well, thank you for, the, for your attention. I love this quote that I put it in my PhD thesis. I think we all agree here that if we want to change the world, we have to start with coffee. So let's do it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Amaya. But we have questions. One in the back. Hello, a very quick question. You mentioned at the beginning of um, uh, that there is a, a patented process you introduced into the market. Can you just elaborate a little bit in shortly what you patented because the freeze dry is already a, a very old process, right? What is the innovation you brought to the market? Well, that, that patent is, is to uh, focuses on the, uses, uh, on the use of coffee silver skin. So the patent, the title of the patent is the applications for coffee sil silver skin, another by the other byproduct. Uh, so extra an um, obtainment of an extract from coffee silver skin to be used in as a food ingredient and for co for cosmetic applications. So this was uh, studied from 2010 in our research group, and then we used this same what aqueous extraction and drying uh, in on the co on the coffee cascara on a different byproduct, and we obtained even better extraction yield. So which was good. Yeah. Any other questions? Dr. Lackermeyer. Um, first, thank you for your fantastic presentation and the various new products, very interesting products. I have a question about the spray dried powder. Is this covered by the novel food approval already? Because I think a category of dried infusion is already approved and probably a sprayed, your spray dried powder would be covered by this approval. We actually wondered, and my colleague, colleague Anne Catherine will elaborate tomorrow when we talk about the more in depth on the legal sense about this category, but we really wondered what this might be, a dried infusion. Perhaps we now know what a dried infusion is. Yeah, uh, I think it might be covered because in, in the regulation it also mentions instant coffee products mm -hmm. uh, besides ready, non-alcoholic ready-to-drink beverages. Yeah. So, so I think we're good if there's a company interested in our product. Yeah, I believe so too actually. So this product would be nice and I hope that we see it in the market. Mm -hmm. Oh, hi. Thank you for the presentation. It was eye-opening. Um, I really wanted to try that yogurt <laughs> that you mentioned. Yeah, it looked we very interesting. We didn't bring any. <laughs> but I, have, um, I was very curious when you mentioned that you also conducted sensory analysis. And I'm just curious on the method that you use in the sensory analysis for Cascara. Yes, we, well, we did a, cons a consumer's acceptance a sensory analysis. So it was a, with population that we recruited. and. We recruited uh, teenagers under 18 years old and adults, and they analyzed attributes of flavor, all or, um, appearance, and with an hedonic nine-point scale. Hedonic nine-point yes. scale. All oh, right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And jar. jar. Yes, just about right. Yes. We didn't publish that, though. No. It's going to be published soon. <laughs> So 
So thank you, Amaya, for your great presentation. Uh, for the spray drying, um, I received some samples from uh, different uh, yeah, big players, let's say, uh, Olam Food Ingredients, to, to say it. And um, they, they, they had a lot of problems dealing with the stickiness mm. of the powder. Yeah. So how did you tackle this uh, stickiness problem with your instant powder? Well, we didn't have a, any, any problem. We've, we did several trials using the infusion with the proportion mentioned in the patent uh, directly, and we also tried to concentrate with membranes before spray drying to increase the solid, solid, uh, solid compounds. I was thinking in solid Spanish. Content. Solid content, yeah, uh, of, of the infusion previous to prior to the spray drying to see if we could increase the yield. Uh, but I, th I think maybe since without con concentration before we obtain nice results, I think it makes no sense to put another step on the production. And we didn't have any issues with that, at least in our specific case. Okay, because normally um, I think the, m the major sugar yes. is the sucrose, mm. and in uh, amorphous state it is very uh, sticky, so it's very surprising that you Sticky. didn't have any stickiness yeah. in your powder. No. We had more of a, those, well, you saw it firsthand, <laughs> uh, that hygroscopic problems that, that we had. We, of course, we have to conduct some self-study uh, studies uh, that we, we have done them uh, with the powder and with the liquid infusion. And of course, it preserves better as a powder. Uh, but we need to deepen in, the, in that, yes. And just to conclude, uh, I want to, to tell you that for me it's a great idea because in a commercial point of view or in the production point of view, it's using a powder in the syrup room of a beverage company. It's the best way to, to produce uh, these beverages because today we are producing the ice cascara you, you mm -hmm. show, you yes, show us. <laughs> And uh, we are using baskets full of cascaras, so it's very hard to be consistent and to manage the quality. So uh, having such product on the market, it's uh, really uh, very promising. So uh, thank you to, to develop this product. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? No? Okay, so thank you very much for your dance start.